Hi, my name is Bjergsen from Team Solo Mid. This is my basic champion guide to Anivia. Anivia in solo queue is actually surprisingly strong. Um, I usually don't like control mage as much, but since Anivia has so much pick potential and potential to wall people off and catch them, I think she's actually a really strong pick. It's easier to get out of her weak laning phase and potentially even getting some kills. So I think Anivia is actually a really good champion for carrying solo queue, but she's hard to play and has a high skill cap, so you have to be good at her to make it work. For Anivia's laning early game, it's not that strong unless you hit the Q, so you can play one of two ways. You can play to look for a Q uh, for damage and harass, or you can just use your Q to push the lane, because two Anivia Qs will clear the whole wave, even super early game. Uh, generally, I like to look for the harass, unless it's a matchup where I feel like I just need to push and avoid trades. Uh, after that, you kind of just want to play safe throughout the laning phase until about level 6 or 7, which is where Anivia can start trading with blue buff and with her ultimate, just... Uh, Play safe and understand your power spikes, and don't play too aggressive before you get your ult, because that's the most important point. Anivia's team fighting is generally just about zoning as much as possible using your wall, ult, and Q. Uh, generally, I just like to burst the nearest target, because Anivia has a lot of front up burst if you manage to land the Q. But you can also play to zone off the backline by walling them off, throwing off a Q, and then maybe focusing damage on someone closer to you. There's a lot of different ways you can play, but generally you want to be playing backline and just doing as much damage and causing chaos. When you're playing Anivia and you walk up to wall someone, there will always be a designated way that they're going to automatically walk. If the wall is slightly shorter on the right, they're always going to walk to the right unless they change the course of the champion. So a lot of people don't instantly change the way they're walking, so you can often wall and lead with a Q instantly knowing that they're going to walk that way. Um, a good tip for soloing blue throughout the game is that you can wall blue into his little corner and he won't do any damage to you and it's not going to reset or lose patience. And I generally pick Anivia when she's good against the enemy comp because Anivia plays well with pretty much any champion on your own team. She does prefer higher damage, higher range AD carries like Jinx, but it honestly doesn't really matter. She's also very good with Vayne because she can condemn into the Anivia wall. She's very good against immobile champions, all these kinds of champions, because she can kite them very efficiently and it's easy to catch them with the wall. I think it is largely because of teleport that Anivia got popular, because her laning phase before tier and on tier is pretty weak. She loses a lot of trades unless you play her very well, and if the enemy dodges your Q, it's hard to constantly come out ahead. So TP helps you to Back whenever you need TP back to lane, you can constantly push and get mana back. Uh, props to Peke for starting the TP on Nivea because it's actually very strong. For runes on Nivea, I run Magic Pen Reds, HP Scaling Yellows, CDR Scaling Blues, and AP Quents. Uh, the CDR helps throughout the game and gives you more walls, especially later in the games, and more stuns, which helps a lot in team fights. Uh, overall, you can go Armor Yellow, so it gets 80 matchups, and you can go MR Blues in against very aggressive matchups if you're not very comfortable with Anivia, but this is a rune set I recommend against every matchup if you're good at Anivia. For Masteries on Anivia, you just want to run 12-18. Um, Thunderlord's Decree is just the best mastery right now for any kind of champion that procs it using 3 autos or 3 spells, so you just want to be getting that uh, as easy as possible. I like Oppressor in the offense tree because you do increase damage when someone is slowed, and Anivia pretty much always has someone either slowed or stunned. For Anivia skill order, I always go Q at level 1, E at level 2, another level of E at level 3, and then level 4 kind of depends. If you feel like you're going to get a jungle gank uh, before level 8, I go wall at level 4. If not, I just go another level in Q because it helps with wave clear and more burst. For maxing, I go E first, Q second, and wall last. Some people like to do wall over the Q, but I think the damage output from Q and getting the lower cooldown is better than getting the bigger wall. For Anivia's item build, I always start with Doran's Ring and um, build into either Chalice or Tear as my first item. I go Chalice if they have a lot of uh, magic resistance on their team and Tear if it's just any other game. Uh, then my first item is usually Rod of Ages. After the buffs, it's been really, really strong. Just 20 extra AP and a tiny bit more cost. After that, uh, you want to get CDR boots and upgrade your either Tear or Chalice. After that, I like to go Voice Staff and then whatever AP items you see fit. Thank you for watching my basic champion's guide to Anivia. You can check out more content at lowclass.com. Their onwards is also pretty strong. Overall, I'd say that he is a very decent pick right now, especially with all the auto attack reliant champions with Rageblade going around. Um, so he's definitely one of